Hey guys, in this video I'm going to do a commentary of a one versus one Nomad game that I played a few days ago and if anyone's watched my previous one versus one game it was a one versus one Nomad where my opponent douched me in Dark Age and I was able to successfully defend against the douche and win the game in early Castle Age. Now this is my next game after that game which I think was the next day and my opponent in this game also douched me in this game. So I was facing a back-to-back -back, um, douche in two games, and I was also, again, able to successfully defend against the douche in this game. And my opponent in this game was a little bit better than probably the opponent that I played in the previous game, and the game went for a bit longer. And I thought this would be a good replay to showcase um, some strategy behind how to defend against the douche, at least my approach to it. Because I think that would be helpful because I know that um, a lot of people, like when they get douched, they will just leave the game because they just don't want to have to deal with the the stress of playing against it. It's Maybe they don't know exactly what to do. Um, I think the douche strategy is more successful in team games because in a team game, you've obviously got multiple people playing. And the person doing the douche is kind of like the guy that's holding you down while his buddy's kicking you in the guts. And in one versus one, there is no other guy. So, you know, it's basically just a wrestling game of sorts. Uh, so in this replay, I'm playing as the Huns. This is my first time playing the Huns in one versus one Nomad. And this, in this patch, they've actually been given quite a strong, possibly overpowered buff, which may have slightly improved my chances of winning this game. And I'll be showcasing that particular buff in this replay as well. So I'm going to press play and I'm going to just talk through the replay like normal. So I've got two villagers that have spawned over in, I guess, the western corner of the map. Uh, and I'm also, one of the villagers is quite close to the shore. And then I've, with the villager at the top, I found a good TC spot next to a gold and a wood line. I've also spotted a red villager walking in towards the center of the map. And that gives me a good um, indication of po the possible direction of his TC. Now, Huns start with minus 100 wood. So, a difference to all other civilizations in the game is that with Huns, you do not build a dock at the start because you cannot afford to build a dock and a town center at the same time. Because if you build the dock first, you won't have enough wood for the town center and you'll have to make a lumber camp or just... I guess resign the game and uh, and queue up again. So you build the town center with three villages instead of two. I have seen a variation of this where um, the player that actually got my Huns build order from left hit one of his villages on the other side of the map. I think he collected some food from a deer and he waited there for his um, other for the other villagers to build the TC and collect enough wood for the dock, and then that villager built the dock, built the dock. I personally would prefer to just bring in the third villager to the TC and then build uh, my dock closer to my TC, which actually I think um, ends up being a little bit beneficial in this game. So the new bonus that Huns have been given on Nomad style maps is they get a free horse scout at the start of the game. I think this might end up getting changed because it just, I think it's a bit overpowered because it gives you so much information about the map. You're able to find your enemy TC spot, your enemy dock spot, you're able to collect herdables and you're able to find boars super easy. So I've already found um, a llama with my horse and I've queued all of my villagers to wood and as soon as I got 130 wood I send a villager over to a close shorefish and then the when the villager arrives at the shorefish I'll have about 150 wood and they'll be able to start building the dock and then immediately after that I send a villager out to get the first boar. And I queue up Loom after the fourth villager because I haven't been able to afford a fifth villager in time. And then I'm going to shoot down the ball and collect um, some food. And then I can build my fifth villager with no idle TC. And then it will just take me a little bit of time to get my first fishing ship out. Um, but from this point on, I don't have to build any houses as the Huns. So regular sieves, they have to go fishing ship house, fishing ship house. Huns can just build fishing ships with their wood. They don't have to spend any wood on the houses so you you do start off um behind in terms of the amount of fishing ships that you have at the start of the game but you um by about your third or fourth fishing ship you'll catch up to the other sieves and um you it's you'll be in a good place in feudal age i actually quite like um with, with this bonus with their horse scout you can see the amount of information i've already found my opponent's tc i've, I've found multiple herdables i've found multiple boars 
I've got good information about uh, close mineral deposits on the map. I can see two stones and three of the golds on the map already. And there's another two boars just in my screen, just there. Uh, I know there's a berries nearby. I've just got so much information about where I need to go to collect food. And I've had, uh, I think, maybe one second of idle TC. And I think my first fishing ship has sort of just come out around about the time that the uh, most um, players would have two fishing ships. And then my second fishing ship is about probably 40 seconds behind a sieve like Mad Yards, which have no Dark Age Eco bonus. So again, the build order is once you sort of reach this stage of the game is very similar. You can sort of have around six villages on wood and then you just kind of focus on on collecting food after that. So now I'm going to bring in my second boar. Uh, the boar distance from my TCs is pretty far, so I, I'm going to be able to use one of my llamas that I found here to block while I bring this boar back into my TC. And now I'm just sending four villagers over to deer as well while I do that, and I'm going to be taking some food from a llama under my TC just while I'm waiting for the boar to come in so I can uh, constantly create villages. Now I think I'm up, I'm up to three fishing ships at 7 minutes 15. And then I think from around this point, I'll, I'll probably be around about the same as a regular sieve, maybe one fishing ship behind. And with my, ne my next fishing ship, because I'm not having to make houses, I'll be ahead. Just gonna, I didn't, didn't do the prettiest poor little here. I'm just going to do a little bit of force dropping. Also found another llama over near my opponent's TC, and I'm going to use the llamas to try and find my opponent's dock. So I'm getting out my, I think it's my fourth fishing ship now, yep. At around 8 minutes 12, got five villagers on the boar. I'm just going to send those villagers in from the deer and stick them on the boar as well. And I'm going to be looking at bringing in my my third boar. So I was talking about um, the, fa the fact that I faced a douche strategy in this game. So the first thing I wanted to say about defending against a douche is a, dou a douche is a low confidence strategy. But the, the reason why someone might douche you, well, I guess there's two reasons. One of them is their civilization has a, a bonus towards it. In this case, Sicilians do have a bonus. Their town centers after the starting town center are built 100% faster. So when they're, they're building their douche TC, it's gonna go up very quick. Um, and the second reason is they have a low confidence um, in, I guess, their map position or the sieve matchup or something like that. So I have a feeling that my opponent may be random into Sicilians and was like, oh, what can Sicilians do on Nomad? They can douche. I was expecting more of a castle drop. Like, I was expecting, oh, they're going to go for a castle drop. But um, here, here my opponent sent a forward villager to try and find some information about my TC. And... He's, he's also trying to block me from bringing in my third boar. I'm able to micro my villager around it. And I noticed that his villager is on low health. I think I, maybe I, would, I hit it with my TC or did some damage to it. So I'm sending one villager to just um, whittle down that villager over there. However, I didn't realize at the time that this forward villager turned into basically a distraction. So while he's doing this... And I'm going to send my horse scout over there to um, to try and block his villager so he can't quick wall or get away. Is he's bringing his villagers over uh, to douche me sort of around about this point? Maybe it's a, maybe a minute after this. I think it comes in around about 12 or 13 minutes. Here we go. I can see them on the mini map. So yeah, the douche is coming in. I think it might be a couple minutes later than the previous game. So here I'm just trying to focus on getting this villager down because I just want to make sure that I kill it. I haven't even noticed what's happening. Um, so there, I, I finally spotted the douche, and I was, I was just trying to fix my fishing ships, building my second dock. I haven't got an attack notification at this stage. I, I don't hear anything, and I'm pretty sure I lost two villages on my mill. And I, I don't recall ever hearing a, like a, an attack notification for that in the game. Like it, de it definitely didn't appear in the replay. So I had no idea that I'd lost two bills. All right, so... Um, so one thing that I forgot to mention before, so the, I'm just going to quickly pause the game. So the first thing that I wanted to say, uh, apart from the fact that the douche is a low confidence strategy, is that one of the ways that you can beat the douche is to, well, I guess one of the best ways to set yourself up to beat a douche is to be, already be in a good or, or better posi economic position than your opponent is. Because when someone douches you, they have to delete their town center and rebuild it. That costs 375 resources. Um, giving you an immediate 375 resource advantage, plus the, all of their villages that they send to build the town centre have to walk to the town centre and then rebuild the town centre. So that's 
a, a certain number of villager minutes where those villagers aren't gathering resources, which puts them further behind. And then they're also not creating villages in that time as well. So, you know, in the time that it might take them to walk over and build the TC, they might already be two villages behind you or something like that. So my opponent's killed two of my, my villagers in this instance and um, has gotten me down two villages. So that part doesn't matter. Now, the second thing in both of the videos that I haven't done, well, for, uh, actually after I mentioned that, so the first thing you should do when you see a douche coming in, don't panic. So try and think um, objectively and try, try and be calm and try and make good strategic decisions. So one of the things that I haven't done in either of my videos that has worked for me is A, I have not tried, it, I have not tried to vilfight the villagers building the TC because I think that's a waste of time. Once once the town center gets started, it's you're not gonna be able to deny it. Also, don't garrison the TC to try and get into a TC fight unless you're some very specific civilizations. Like if, if you're Teutons and the enemy tries to douche you, you've got a good chance of winning because Teuton town centers have more garrison capacity. Or like if someone as a regular civ tries to douche you and you're Persians, you've got... Um, more hit points on your town center. If you're Georgians, you've got cheaper repairs. Maybe some of those civilizations you are do, getting engaging in the TC uh, arrow fighting war might be a good idea. But in this instance, I've decided in both games not to contest shooting with the TC. So I'm just going to let my town center go down. In the previous video, I repaired the town center a little bit. In this one, I'm almost all the way up to feudal age before the enemy. Um, has, the enemy player has even started shooting my TC, so I'm not really any, in, in any danger of losing the TC, and I don't have to do any repairs to sort of make, make sure I'm able to get to feudal age. So the first thing I did is um, I have just moved my villages out of range of the TC arrows. So I've still got villages working on the wood line. I've queued villages from underneath the TC to a llama behind the TC, and I'm now running villages away from the immediate area. I'm going on to stone, and I'm also going to be building a lumber camp on the wood line. Um, now, I'm building stone because in a game where I was playing, in a three versus three Baltic game, I decided to try a Persian douche on the flank, and my opponent beat me. He even shot down my town center because he built towers around my TC and made it so that I couldn't safely repair my town center. Uh, in that, that game specifically, when I did my douche, I didn't TC near a wood line. It was just around a couple of straggler trees. And I, because he towered my TC, I, I just couldn't, I didn't have access to resources and um, it meant I couldn't safely repair my TC. So I, I figured going onto that close stone was gonna be a good idea um, because I, I can drop a tower on the berries to pre prevent his villagers from being able to um, take those berries to get the feud the food to save you up to feudal age or castle age just making it more difficult for him to collect resources so um, you can see that my opponent is also walling up the left side of the wood line so that was i was going to try and sneak that villager around um, to maybe build a tower or something uh, on the wood but I'm, i've decided against that and i'm gonna i'm gonna tower the berries so building that tower with four villagers I'm also sending a bunch of villagers to wood, and I've built a lumber camp on the next wood line, and I'm also queuing up a fire ship. Now, um, I've obviously got loom, that leaves me with 50 gold, and that's enough gold for one fire ship. Now, the tower that I have built has actually made my opponent delete his TC and rebuild it. So immediately by building this tower, my opponent has decided to delete the town center and rebuild it to um, be able to shoot down the tower and so that he can safely collect the resources around his TC. So immediately, like that tower cost me 200 res, it's, it, it's forcing my opponent to spend another 375 res on rebuilding the TC. One other possible reason he might have done it is also to deny my ability to take wood uh, next to the town center. Anyway, so that's already a victory for me. Um, now I was talking about the water situation. So in both games that I've played, uh, in the first one, my opponent didn't even build a dock, which I think was a big mistake. In this game, my opponent has fishing economy. He's got uh, four fishing ships over here. And when people are douching, they're generally not going to be collecting gold. And particularly, like my opponent is in feudal. Um, however, it's very unlikely that he's going to have a gold mine or be collecting gold. So he's not going to be able to contest water. So I'm sending a fire ship down there to go and kill his fishing economy to also reduce his um, resource per minute and slow down his castle age time. 
So, um, there we go. That's my opponent has actually one of the other things that he's done he's able to do by redouching is he is able to kill a few extra villagers because he's able to sort of shoot them as they come out of the town center so i had to um change my gather point there so i've lost two villagers because of that so that again you know um that was a bit of bad luck uh, in that instance so i'm building now i'm building another tower and this tower is not necessary. It will de partially deny his ability to take gold, but it will also mean that he can't access the stone. Um, so, because one thing that Sicilians can do is they can make donjons and then make sergeants. So that's probably probably my next concern is um, is that you know donjons and sergeants. So I'm, I'm making sure I'm also building another mill, which I probably didn't have to do because. Technically, if I just um, take the view lock off for a second, I can use these villagers on the hunt right with the shorefish to turn them into a, a, a okay. um, fisherman, and then I can drop the food off the dock. But I built a mill, so I'm focused. I'm just focusing on my on the goal of getting to Castle Age. So at the moment, I'm uh, I'm just about to lose my TC. Here, I I'm not 100% sure if the order that I built the buildings was correct. So I built a blacksmith first, then a market, and then I'm going to rebuild my town center. I probably should have maybe made the saved up for the town center um, before the market, uh, but it's going to end up being when I've got the town center built, I'm going to have the resources to put castle age. So I'm making sure once my TC is down, once I've, I've built the towers and I built uh, the, I built a new gold mine, I built a lumber camp, etc., so I can collect the resources for castle age. I'm just focusing on that goal. I'm just focusing on making sure that I can get to castle age. So I need to collect wood to be able to make the prerequisite buildings. I've got plenty of food, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then I've, I've used the market to, um, I've, so, cause currently I'm not on gold, so I've sold some food for um, some gold and some wood so I can build um, my TC. And here, I, I think I made some mistakes with the market rebalancing. So currently I don't have enough gold, just sending a couple of villages to collect a bit of gold there. And I've got, I'm over collecting food, so I'm gonna be able to sell some food to pick up. I probably should have walled in that tower, and as a result of that, he's deciding to build fight it. Now, if I walled it in, he still would have been able to shoot it down with the TC, but at least um, it would probably take longer, for maybe, for the TC to shoot it down. I'm not sure. And then I found another stone over here, so I'm going to get on that stone mine. And then again, at, same as the last game, once I click Castle Age, I'm going to focus on getting stone for a castle. So I click Castle Age as soon as the town center's gone up. I'm just fixing my idle villages. I'm going to send them to wood as well. I'm also moving my herdables over to my new TC location. And I'm going to move these villages onto stone. I probably should have moved those over to my new stone mine over in the, the northern corner of the map. And uh, I've also killed all... I think I've killed all of these fishing ships. I'm just making sure of that. And then I'll be able to work down the dock with the couple of fire ships that I've made. So here, here comes the donjon rush. So he's donjon rushing my gold and my wood line. Uh, so I'm going to move my villages because I don't necessarily... I've got it already... Got, I'm just going to build a new lumber camp on the other wood line. I don't think my opponent knows about my new TC location just yet. And I think my villager has actually gotten stuck in, um, there on the base of the donjon. Might be a, a bug in the next patch. So now my concern is sergeants. So I know that my opponent is going to be making sergeants, particularly after the you pudding videos. Uh, so I'm building a barracks to be able to later build a stable to make some knights. Uh, because sergeants are quite tanky units, there's no point making scouts um, or archers against them really. I think knights is probably going to be the way to go, particularly because I'm already in castle age. So here I'm going to be focusing on getting the wood for a stable. Uh, almost got enough stone for a castle. I don't have access to a gold at this stage. Um, but I'll be able to use the market to sell some resources to get some gold and then I can use my castle to reclaim um, the access to my gold mine and also shoot down that donjon. Now, some people would have tried a very risky castle. Um, on, like I think a lot of people, when they're thinking castle drop, they're thinking castle drop on a town center. So I, I have the suspicion that some of my the teammates that I play with in Age of Empires 2, in my Age of Empires 2 group, might have decided to try and walk all the way around here and, and try and do a castle drop on the enemy's TC over here. Now that I think that's just way too risky, and I would much rather just shoot down the donjon to reclaim access to my gold and then consolidate my position from there. So I'm, I'm, I'm playing it safe here with this decision, but I think it's a great one. 
So as you can see, there's a sergeant coming out. I really don't want to have sergeants in my eco at this stage um, because I don't even have a stable. So I'm going to quickly rush up some stone walls to prevent the sergeant's ability to harass my villagers. I'm even going to stone wall in my castle as well. I'm just focusing on making sure that I correctly micro the villagers to prevent the sergeant's access to my economy. I'm not really going to worry about the access from the right side because the, this, by the time the sergeants get there, I'm going to have some units on the field, so that's not really a problem. And there's also a close relic, so I can build a monastery, um, and that's what I will be doing as well. I'll be going into monks because I know that monks is a very good unit to be able to defend against sergeants as well. Also just um, continuing to fix, I'm build, queuing up some extra fishing ships because I've got complete water control at this stage so I can um, oh, I can continue to collect in fish as um, making, it, ma making up the majority of my food economy at this stage. And I'm also going to make a mill on that hunt over there. I've completely forgotten about those three villages on that stone mine. I'm not even going to worry about microing those, so they can go down, that's okay. I'm also building a Tarkin from the stable. The Tarkins aren't quite as strong as knights, but it's a unit that I can make. They, they, they create pretty quickly from the castle, and I can use those to work down the sergeants. So he's walked into my castle fire there, and my Tarkin's probably gonna get most both of those kills. So in this game, I think, my apart from the, the time that my town center has been not been that I haven't had a town center, I've only had, I don't know, seven seconds vital TC. So I've, I've kept my economy running, making sure I've got enough food to continuously make villages. Um, I've, I've gone back to stone because I've got the stone mining upgrade. I may as well just do another castle. And I'm gonna, at, at this stage, I'm sort of thinking, what, what where's the, a good spot for another castle? That stone mine looks like a, a vulnerable position because one thing I can do is like, one thing I think it's, it's important to think about rather than like town centering your opponent's TCs is to think about resource control. So on Nomad, there are six golds and six stones. So my enemy has access to this stone because his town center is on it. He doesn't yet have access to this stone because I've got a tower here. He's accessing this stone. I actually think in this game, uh, no, there is six stones. So I've got one stone over here. And then uh, let's have a look at my Fog of War. So I know that there's a stone here and a stone here, and he's not on those. So currently, this is the only stone that he can access. And I, if I castle drop this stone, I can prevent his ability to um, continuously... Like, one thing that I'm... The only really thing I'm worried about this stage is um, basically... Sicilian castles and donjons and things like that. Like that's that's a way that my opponent can get back into the game is with a lot of buildings that have stone defenses. So if I can take my opponent off off stone and restrict his access to stone and gold, I can win the game that way. I'm just going to go back to my view lock. So I'm also building another a gold mine on this other gold over here, as it's. Um, Got, uh, I'll be able to get a bit more gold access to it. So the, the sergeants are currently attacking my main dock. However, I built a second dock, so I'm just going to move those fishing ships, and I'm going to build a third dock on the other side of the map. Now I've got enough stone for a castle, and I'm going to do a, a castle drop on his gold mine. So I've also I'm queuing up my first monk, and I'm going to I'm going to collect the relic to get in some gold access. I'm getting in horse collar, and now I'm gonna start thinking about making some farms because at, at this stage of the game, I wanna be making some cavalry units uh, from my castle and my stable. I'm gonna to need um, to, to collect more food to do that. So I'm gonna be making some farms as well as focusing on um, collecting the free hunt resources on the map, such as the deer, the berries, and well, the hurricane berries is, um, is not hunt, um, but berries and boars, etc. So here comes the castle drop, making an extra couple of Tarkins. And um, I've got very good vision over my, what my opponent sort of got. I've got a good idea of where he is on the map. I'm pretty sure he, at this stage, he might have ended up having um, some sneak bases. Like some, I think he's TC'd in a couple of other areas that I can't see. But I've got town watch, I've got good vision, and I've got a pretty good idea um, that this castle is gonna be quite annoying for him. And I've got a couple of cavalry units there that I can use to chase away the fleeing villagers. So I'm going to be focusing on doing that now. Sending the targets in. I'm also going to send those villagers over to gold and stone. 
So my opponent hasn't quite, he hasn't noticed yet. There we go, he's deleting the Palisade. And just as he deletes it, my Tarkins are coming in. I'm going to be able to clean up those villages. He's now getting in Husbandry for a bit of extra speed on the Cavalry. I don't have any Blacksmith upgrades at this stage. So I could have probably taken the fight against those sergeants, but I don't need to. Like, I can just retreat back until I've got some more numbers, and I can use my, my monk to um, try and get a conversion as well. I've also got a couple of extra knights coming in. Now I'm queuing up a second monk. And I'm going to be focusing on collecting stone for another castle. My opponent has reached castle age, which the opponent in the previous game did it. So now he has the, the ability to make a castle. It's possible, um, so I think he's just about to throw one up. He would have had to, maybe me denying the stone meant that he had to use the market to be able to build a castle. I'm getting in the gold mining upgrade here, and as you can see, he's throwing up a castle um, next to his TC. That will give him access to the stone mine uh, to the left. Um, however, I'm on 500 stone, so I can start thinking about dropping my third castle. End up converting one of those villages with a monk. I think I'm a little bit slow to micro my monks away and end up losing one. Still queuing up villages. I'm still only on one town center as well. Um, because I don't think it's worth it at this stage to add in an extra TC. Because I all I need to do is... Um, restrict my opponent's access to resources on the map and I j he doesn't really have that much military so I, I can stay on 1TC, I can afford to make units um, with the resources that I'm bringing in and I've also got better units than he does so I managed to get a conversion there on that sergeant probably could have micro that a little bit better and my third castle is going to be denying his stone access at the top so again, I'm electing not to go for his town center. I'm going for his. I'm, I'm going for resource denial. Still continuing to make villages, and at this stage, I'm sort of thinking about Imperial Age so, because he's got the castle there. I've got good resources. I'm getting in fletching, so I've got more range on those stone miners. So I'm like, all right, I've got good amount of gold, good amount of food. Time to rebalance my economy and click Imperial Age. So the castle's gone up. And there I can get some mill kills, forcing him to get off stone. And I think here I bought a bit of food. And I think I sell a bit of wood. And then I'm clicking up to Imperial Age. So when I get to Imp, I've got three three castles up. So I can build trebuchets from the castles. And I can treb down his castle and his TCs. And now I'm going to use my cavalry units to go around and try and find what else he's got. So there I've discovered that there's some villagers that are trying to... Um, to move to the south, and I can see that there's some farms around his original town centre spot. Just going to destroy this house, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to wait for my monks. Jump my monks into the, the, into the castle, jump out, go for the conversion. Two conversions at a pretty good time. Castle fire also helping out. I don't, again, I don't have any blacksmith upgrades on my units. I'm getting in forging now. I don't think I have bloodlines um, at the moment either. My opponent's choosing to try and run his units away. I'm not exactly sure where he's going. And even I've got a little bit of hill advantage here. So I'm going to completely clear his sergeants up here without losing a single unit. And I've got two monks. I can use my monks to heal up my units. So I've got another sergeant coming in there. Just moving my monks out of the way. I'm going to focus fire that knight with the healing So because that was the weakest unit. I've got the stone for a fourth castle. There we go. I can see that my opponent has um, built a town centre where his farming economy previously was. Also forcing him to delete that sergeant. I think he was running bills around the shoreline to the left. At that, and then there I'm getting in bloodlines and plus one. I'm trying to get, get in bodkin arrow for some extra range. I can't. I'm also going to build some outposts. So I'm going to try and see where he's... Um, He's sneaking his economy around too. He's got one one sergeant just casually attacking my top castle there. I can just go up a Tarkin to sort that out. And then popping an outpost sort of in the middle of the map, just give me a bit of vision. Building university so I can get in ballistics. So my castles are a bit more accurate. Getting the cavalier upgrade from the, the stable, queuing up two trebuchets, sanctity for my monks. Still one town centre. I haven't, haven't really felt the need to add a second one. I've got a 2,000 score lead over my opponent. 
and then with my outpost I can see that there is something in the south of the map on that stone mine. So with that villager I'm going to build a tower and I'm also going to send some cavalry units down there to deal with that. Getting in the gold shaft mining upgrade because um, I need to be spending a lot of gold at this stage on cavalry units, trebuchets, monks, etc. Here come the Tarkins. Focusing the trebuchets on the castle. Like the Reach Castle. And then he hasn't even reacted to the Tarkins attacking his villagers over there. Easy cleanup. And then the tower will give me control of that stone mine as well. Third trebuchet coming out. Also getting in a couple more blacksmith upgrades for my cavalry units. And then that tower has actually given me vision of some sneaky economy over to the right side of the map as well. So that's going to allow me to put some pressure on his eco over there. And now I'm building my third town center. I'm going to also castle drop the, the stone over there. Again, focusing on controlling mineral resources on the map. And now I'm going to work down his town center. And then he's, I think he said GG well played there, but the chat filter has filtered it out. And he's called... He yeah, ended up resigning. Yeah, so um, hopefully this video was um, insightful about some of the things that you can do to defend against the douche. I like I think my opponent, the opponents that have tried to douche me probably had a little bit less skill than me on the map Nomad, um, and I think my macro in general has um, has outpaced them quite a bit. Uh, so I think if I end up getting like a, a game that gets really messy when someone tries to douche me, which I'm sure will happen in the future, I'll, I'll make another video and, and see how I go in that one. Uh, so looking at the statistics in this one, the main one I want to look at is the feudal time. So my feudal time was 12.54, and then um, even though I got douched, I still had a roughly respectable castle time of 22 minutes. I think it was a little bit slower than in the previous game. And the game went to Imperial as well. My opponent eventually reached Castle Age, but um, within six minutes I was in Imperial, so there wasn't really much that he could do. Um, I stayed on one TC and only I had some fishing ships, ended up going to 69 villages. Um, even with multiple town centers, he partially caught up to me, but if you look at the economy, resources collected just is off the charts compared to what he was able to bring in. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks for watching, guys, and I hope you look forward to the next one.